Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith, and today, the plan of God for the individual identity of people, or the self. We know from the Bible that God is no fan of selfishness, but the issue is more than just that. In fact, I've heard a lot of Christians hint that our very identity as individual people can't make the trip to heaven at all. This would be a major problem, because while God could still be objectively good, even if this were true, and therefore still technically worthy of worship, it wouldn't really do any of us any good if we couldn't make the transition as individuals to heaven. In this video, I want to look at a few Bible verses that could be used to support this view and see whether any of them work. And nobody putteth a piece of raw cloth unto an old garment, for it taketh away the fullness thereof from the garment, and there is made a greater rent. Neither do they put new wine into old bottles, otherwise the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But new wine they put into new bottles, and both are preserved. Matthew nine sixteen to 17 While it sounds bad, there's nothing in this verse that specifically says that people can't be put in the presence of God without taking away their selves. It could just as easily be referring to sinfulness instead, and that's without even considering the context. Just before these verses, verse 15 says, And Jesus said to them, Can the children of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast. So, based on the context, it seems to refer to different kinds of behavior being appropriate in different circumstances. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless the grain of wheat falling into the ground die, itself remaineth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world keepeth it unto life eternal. John twelve twenty four to 25 Again, at first this sounds bad because wheat doesn't die and then come back to life. They just give birth to other grains of wheat. However, at the end there, Jesus draws attention to two very important points. First, he that hateth this life in this world. These three words show that we don't need to hate our lives absolutely, but only be dissatisfied with this life and seek the next. It's important to know the difference between life on earth and life in heaven if you want to understand this issue. Secondly, the phrase, keepeth it unto life eternal. Now, if one person dies and another several are born because of their death, that's an increase in life, but you can't say in any sense that the person keeps their life just because it benefits others. In order for someone to keep their life, they need to be the same individual person they were. So with that in mind... He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that shall lose his life from me shall find it. Matthew 10, 39. This verse is confusing only because it uses the word life to refer to two distinct things. In the first case, life means our life in this world, and in the second, our life in general, both in this world and in heaven. What Jesus is saying is that we must trust him enough to sacrifice joys in this temporary life in order to obtain a more permanent one. So we have every reason, from these very verses, to think that God's plan for ourselves is to preserve our lives and our individuality. This makes sense, since God created our lives and our individuality, and it would be imperfect of him to create something if his only plan was to destroy it again. Because it would be an imperfect thing to do, we can know that God didn't do it, and therefore that he intends for us to continue on as individuals, according to both scripture and our best understanding of perfect being theology. So if God plans for us to remain separate individuals, why is he referred to as a consuming fire? Well, see you next time. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.